So how many of you watched this? President Biden gave a primetime address last night framing the midterm elections as, quote unquote, battle for the soul of the nation. I want you to take a look. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. History tells us the blind loyalty to a single leader and a willingness to engage in political violence is fatal to democracy. So what do you think of the president going after some MAGA Republicans like this? And DBL Nation, always want to hear from you. Did you find the president's speech to be unifying or divisive? Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. Tori, you were cracking your knuckles. Let us know what you're <laughs> it's feeling. It's a big moment. It's a big moment in Biden's presidency. It's a big moment in American history. It's a inflection point. And they turned the switch on and they said, we're going after. And I want to be very clear here. He made it very clear. Specific Republicans that are extremists. They don't believe the election was fair. They rushed into the Capitol. So if you're just a Republican conservative, we're not talking about you. I want to make that really clear. Um, the Trump, I don't think that was clear, though, to the, be honest. With you. I think that's the whole point of the discussion well, is that that wasn't clear. And it seemed like he alienated half of the country. Agreed. Yeah. But if you actually watch the speech, he made the first 15 minutes extremely clear. I'm speaking to the extreme group of MAGA Republicans. He separated it. He did the best he could of trying to say I'm not speaking to all of you. So if you listen to the speech, you would hear that. Um, Kaylee McEnany, the Trump's former press secretary, said this. She did not like it. She said, standing in front of a hellish red background, Biden called half the country, like Jeff was saying, the MAGA Republicans threats and clear and present dangers. Then he says, empathy is the fuel of democracy, the willingness to see each other not as enemies, but as fellow Americans. So a lot of people agree. They think that he polarized it more by calling it out. And I will say this from the bottom of my heart. To me, it is not polarizing to call out fascism. It is patriotic. And if you don't do it, you might want to take a look at what your party is leaning towards. If your party is all about one guy and disloyalty to any opposition, that's fascism. That's a problem. And we fought a whole war against that. So ask your parents and your grandparents how they felt about fascism and World War II. The idea that Trump really cares about those group of people is absurd. He's a grifter. He's a con man. He has gold toilets and doesn't think of the working guy. So all of this is so anti-American that it hurts when I realize people are getting conned. He stiffs people about money all the time. Well, he's stiffing the American public about being a leader of a democracy because he isn't. He isn't. Uh, Liz, I don't think this is about Trump. And I'm in... I don't like that they just keep battling each other. Trump's not the president anymore. Right. You are. Right. So lead us, right? Unite us. Don't divide half the country, even though you said he explained that clearly. I don't think it was clear, right? That's fair. The blind loyalty he talks about is on his side. People just follow. They're not, I'm not allowed to question things up here. There's certain things I can't say, but when I go home in my little group and have my friends, I'm like, hey, could you believe this happened? I kind of feel like this, but I, I feel scared to say that because for the sake of my own job, the blind loyalty is on his side, not on this side. Which party ran into the Capitol blindly with gallows to hang vice but president? See, not my you're, party. You're, you're saying that now you're grouping everybody. You're saying the whole party. Those who rushed the Capitol. It's wrong, are wrong. Right. Are wrong. Right. If you support the January 6th, you're wrong. If you ran in there, you're wrong. If you defend that or say that the election was stolen, you're wrong. That's a small percentage of the Republican Party. And it's pretty loud, isn't it? It's loud. You're right. So is 90% of um, social media. We all know I say it 100 times, but it just goes through deaf ears. 10% of what's written on social media is 90% of the content. I agree with you. That's what's happening here. And the blind loyalty in this culture needs to stop. We need to be able to question things, have our freedom of speech, since you, you talk about people fighting for our rights. We need to have freedom of speech and not be fired or put down or removed from situations for questioning whatever it is, not just Democratic or the Republic, just I social. I agree with you, Jeff. I actually agree with you. You sound Even, like a comic. Honestly. No, I, I, how, I, I totally think, agree yeah. with you because how are we going to have conversations if people are blindly following Biden and blindly following You're, Trump? Let me ask but, one thing, but it's not Biden. It's the Constitution that they're following. But of course, well, one Republicans, is not and one is. And to me, I'm sick of being blamed for being polarizing when I didn't rush the Capitol. That is a group of people 
people that is taking over this country. We agree with you country. there. So let's separate that. And you can't bring us that. back together if you don't examine them. Right. You cannot I do it. I agree with you with the insurrectionists. Let's call them insurrectionists right now until we can unpack it in a more thoughtful segment. But because we're talking about Trump, I do want to bring up how he responded to Biden's speech. So on his social media platform, Trump called the speech insane. He also said someone should explain to Biden slowly but passionately that MAGA means make America great again. Trump also called into a radio show yesterday and promised. Now, here is where I have a huge issue, which does go into what Tory is saying. He promised he would fully pardon the January 6th rioters, as well as ask for an apology from the government if he's reelected. Speaking of which, this retired New York police officer was sentenced to 10 years in prison yesterday for his ro role in the attack on the Capitol. That's the longest punishment handed down so far. And that's the individual who literally had like a pipe in his hand and was beating a police officer, trying to rip off that police officer's mask so he would suffocate because of the gas everywhere. So again, insurrectionists, criminals need to go to jail to the full extent of the law. Um, what do you feel about both parts of our discussion so far? I was fascinated. I appreciate you guys having that conversation on TV because I don't think it ever happens. You know, and, and uh, Tori, to your point, I think with Biden's speech and w what Jeff was saying and why the two uh, kind of go together is because that Biden did what you're not supposed to do, which is bring up the guy that's irrelevant. At this point, Biden has done a lot of the things he said he was going to do. He got a black woman on the, the Supreme Court. That's a campaign promise fulfilled. He, wanted, he said he was going to reduce student debt. People thought it was going to be uh, eliminated, but $10,000. Uh, when we did that story two weeks ago, my homeboy Joey texted me during the segment and said his son, who just graduated from the University of Colorado, he's starting his life with no debts. Nice. Those are the stories that Biden should be telling people because yeah. I know about Trump. We've all had four years to decide, and if you're pro-Trump, kind of Trump, don't watch politics, you already have an opinion about this man. You already have an opinion about Biden. And I feel like he had a lot of highlights and he focused on the people that we already know about. I, that's where I thought it was a miss. I thought he's had a lot of hits. Gas is uh, 360 yet where I was yesterday. Focus on the positive. Focus on that. Let me just say one sentence to that. You are... Say, say you as many are, sentences as you want. No, <laughs> you, are, you are not fully politically fluent if you think you can ignore Trump. He is not irrelevant. He is the biggest threat to American democracy and especially for the midterm elections. He is the number one for a lot of people and he will get people to the polls more than some other wedge issues. He is not irrelevant. But going very after him fuels him. Going after him fuels okay, him. Someone has to say results. stop. Let's look. I appreciate this conversation because we all agree to what we're talking about, but there's levels to it. Absolutely. And that's how you have a conversation in this country. Uh, it looks like 53% of you believe that he tried to unify the country. 47 7% of you believe that he, it was uh, divisive.